Power Armor is iconic in the Fallout universe. And number four, you either love it or you hate it, depending on whether you can get the fusion cores. Now, today we'll be covering every single spawn location, as well as whether it'll be X01 Power Armor or any other variety. Let's get started. Our first power armor can be found east of Vault 111 at the robotics disposal ground. Rumour had it that a vertibird came crashing down with some precious military hardware. And in this case, it's either a T-45 or T-51 power armor suit. Now, it is parts of one and not a complete suit, unless you're extremely lucky. But it is guarded by nothing other than some rad stags that will quickly run away. Giving you easy access to your first power armor. Alright, let's head on over to Concord. Not too many power armors hold such a memorable moment for beginners. On the roof of the Museum of Freedom, you can find a guaranteed full set of armor. You meet Preston, you fight through some raiders, and you get to have a blast of a time. Now, this armor comes with one pretty neat aspect, as it is a complete set of T-45. If that's your favourite armor in the game, well, happy days. You find yourself a guaranteed spawn, and pretty easy to get to. Pick it up. Pick the minigun up and you can go have a will of a time against the Deathclaw. Now, I am going to head on over to yet another spawn location. This one is Tempine's Bluff and I'll see you over at the train. Once you arrive at this settlement, we'll want to go down the hill to the east here, where we can find a military train. Power armor was often transported in heavily armored cages and heavily protected. Of course, that didn't always work out, and this is one of those cases. Now, this can be a partial spawn of T-45 or T-51. If you follow the red wire, we can open it via a terminal inside. Now, it's advanced lock, so you will need to be able to open them in order to gain access to this particular armor. Now, have you heard of a raider called Boomer? He terrorizes the local area here, and he also has some power armor that could be of use to you. Our next suit is actually being worn at the moment. This one is at Outpost Zamonja. It is worn by a very nasty raider called Boomer. He carries a very dangerous missile launcher. And, uh, or a fat man. Let's see, what's he got today at the moment? A fat man. Yeah, he does have a few pieces of raider power armor. It is a bit random, but if you want to start collecting that particular piece, he's probably the best person to start with. Of course, he won't hand it over without a fight, so barely that in mind. Now, our next power armor suit is actually underneath the lake at Covenant. Once you head on over to Covenant and get a big old welcome, you'll want to head straight north up the road to the end of the river here. Or, I'll say river, more so lake, where you can find a down vertibird. Where there's a vertibird, there is probably power armor. Now, in this case, this one can have X01 parts. However, they will not be a complete suit. Uh, so, if it's a lower level, there's a higher likelihood of there being more parts to it, or just a single piece of X01. But if that's what you're looking for, it's a place certainly worth visiting. In my case, it's just T45. Although I'm quite low level, so that is pretty good at reflecting that. Now, the next one is on another train. This one was heading inbound for Lexington. So, let's head on over to it now. Right, so this military train was west of the Super Duper Mart, carrying some precious T45 parts. Uh, according to the wiki, it can't be any higher than that. So, let's see. This cage is open via an advanced lock terminal over here. These cannot be lockpicked, so bear that in mind. Now, we're going to change it up. There's two raiders wearing power armor in Lexington. So if that's the type of uh, armor you're looking, we're going to get to very close to one another. Let's go. So we're in the heart of Lexington. First up is the guy on the catwalk. This unnamed raider tends to carry a fat man. He's not afraid to use it. That being said, he has uh, quite a number of parts to raider power armor. So if you're collecting, good place to start. Next guy, he's a little bit higher, so you'll have to do a wee bit of climbing in order to reach him. Specifically, that building there. Climbing up to this guy is a challenge on its own, but once you do, you will be able to get all of the parts of him. He's an unnamed raider, and at lower levels, he should be pretty much a pushover. Now, let's take chance out of the equation. South of the Corvega assembly plant, we can get a guaranteed spawn of T-45 or T-51 near, you guessed it, Another crash vertibird. Let's go. The key part to get into this vertibird is knowing where the lift is. So, 
Travel on over to College Square, it's south of the Corvega plant, and you'll want to head on over towards the freeway over to the west. You'll see a pretty easy unguarded lift. This will take you up to the top where we can access the Vertibird. And once you find it dangling over the edge of the freeway, in fact I'm not sure that it should be physically possible, it's still here. You can find a full set of power armor. This can be X01, so do bear that in mind if you're extremely lucky. Next up is the Federal Ration Stockpile, where we're going to get a wee bit more Raider Power Armor. Let's try and complete the set. Ah, I forgot this is the buggy one. So, a Raider is walking about in Raider Power Armor. However, when you engage him and he decides to get out of it, it actually turns into T45. Not too sure why that's the case. It should be Raider Power Armor. We can see he's actually already gotten out of the suit. Uh, again, that can also occur. So when you approach this area, kind of spot him from a distance. And if not, you'll just have to search around until you find the suit. Um, it should have a number of parts, so that's pretty handy. Right, if you want a chance at T60 but not X01, sometimes you find spawns like that, you'll want to head on over to Fiddler's Green Trailer Estates next. This one makes it quite easy for us to get a chance of T60. If you're high enough level and you haven't been in this area recently, then what we can do is we can start opening trailers. And one of them, well, this one more specifically, uh, ooh, well, once you unlock the master door, there may be a key line around. I haven't been to Fiddler's Green in quite some time. But say it's open, we can hit it straight on. And it's only T45 for me. I'm not high enough for it to even be T60. Uh, but it won't be X01, maybe T60. So bear that in mind before we head on over to our next destination. Next stop on this train is just south of the Greater Mass Blood Clinic, one of my specialities, an unmarked location containing a suit of power armor. Let's go. The warehouses are an easy spot from the Greater Mass Blood Clinic. Just head straight south, you'll see the trailer with an APC, and you want to head on over to the far left. Now, this one has a chance of being pretty good armor, not X01, but you have a chance of some decent parts. Now, let's head on to our next destination, which is a checkpoint just outside of Fort Hagen itself, over here. So after a quick jog and even getting to see a peaceful sleeping Deathclaw, we arrive at another military checkpoint. Now this one in particular is guarded by quite a number of nasty blood bugs which will level up with you. So if you come here to a much higher one, they're pretty nasty. But you can also put them down pretty easily. This armour can be up to T60, not X01. But we are getting there now. Next up, we're going to the Mass Pike, Inter uh, Mass Pike Interchange. That's it. Uh, where we'll find yet another suit of uh, potentially T60. Let's go. Easiest way to access this is probably from its fast travel point. When you do go to it, it'll set you up here. Giving you access to a lift. Going straight up, we will head south to the main base where we'll find the armor. Now these gunners won't take too kindly to you marching in here like you own the place. Whilst for me, they don't really notice. We have more of a truce, just for the video series. After that, I'll go back to killing them. So, this again can be T60 in the case of me. At such a low level with all the spawns, it's T45. Now, we're going to change it up completely. Do you want to know where you can find some X01 power armor? Well, let's head straight on over into the lands, den over to the custom house tower. Let's go. Now the key part to this location is the level you are when you enter the cell. Remember that armor spawns are dependent on your level when you enter and considering the court 35 which is this building right here its power armor is actually outside of the cell. It's on the roof and you could access it if you had a jetpack and a lot of Free time. Now, let's fight our way up to it. You'll have to get through quite a number of protectrons. So let's get to the roof. Ride the elevator. I'll eat my noodles and I'll see you at the roof. Alright, so once you are up here, your problems are just beginning because uh, you will activate two very nasty robotic guardians in the form of an assault tron from this side and a sentry bot from this one. Now, as for the armor inside, this is, uh, wow, it's actually a very, very bad spawn for me. Normally, it's Mark 3 X01. I've just been very unlucky in this uh, particular spawn. Uh, let's see, press the buttons, get it open. 
Well, oh no, it is X01 Mark III, but it looks... Is it going to change if I get into it? Let's have a wee nosy. And just like that, it magically changes into what it should be, which is... Uh, oh, look at that wee golden light when you turn your Pip-Boy on. That's awesome. Yeah, so this is the Mark III. Uh, it starts spawning after level 32. Um... Or is it level 36? It's a high... Come here when you're high in your 30s and you will uh, get this armor. If you come after level 28, it'll probably be normal X01. And beneath that in, you know, sort of every five or six levels, it goes T60, T51, then T45. Now, as for the robots that you have to fight, they're probably the deadliest and biggest problem here. But what I have found is that if you're invisible, they tend to just walk off the edge. Well, mostly. You give them a bit of encouragement. Nah, no encouragement needed there. They normally do just walk off and die. Uh, but you'll probably have to fight them. Right, so from this point, we're actually going to head all the way back over to a military checkpoint south of Natick. Let's go. Spawn into Natick and then follow the Red Rocket Station all the way south towards another military checkpoint. This one can be X-01 Power Armor, so if you are looking pieces of it, this uh, could be a good place for you to have a look. And in all that walking, we have found it. There we go. In my case, it seems to be a near enough full bar missing one leg at T45. Now, the local wildlife around here consists of Yaogwa and Deathclaws, so it is rather dangerous. This uh, officially is the Lake Cockatuit uh, checkpoint. Now, we're going to head back to the Roadside Pines Motel, where there's a raider wearing some armor that uh, we may need if we want to piece together our suit. Once you've reached the motel, you can find several raiders hold up here. One, of course, wearing power armor. And if you're missing any pieces, this might be a good opportunity for you to get it. Now, death claws do roam these lands, especially up in the hills. So you might not have to do too much heavy lifting if you lure them over. The question then comes actually getting the armor from the death claws. Okay, so next up, we're going to go over to a dungeon, the abandoned shack or the federal surveillance shack. Let's go over there and grab ourselves some armor. Can't fast travel, Emily's nearby. Damn it! It's our first and certainly not our last trip into the glowing sea. Once you approach the abandoned shack, it becomes clear it is something else. Now, unlock the wee novice lock and we can go to the lowest level to find this power armor. Of course, you will have to fight your way down to the lower level in order to get the power armor. I am not going to do that. I'm just going to drop the whole way down and show you where it is. Boom. There it is in all its glory with a synth working away at it. Thank you, synth leader, for preparing this armor for us. Yes, it can be X01, so it's a potential place for you to visit. Now, there is a mysterious cave in the glowing sea. This one right here. Uh, besides Skylanes Flight 1665, where we can find some Raider power armor, or more so a frame and some parts. So let's nip over there now. This cave is famously known for having one of the only guaranteed places where you can find some Raider power armor that isn't occupied by Raiders at all. And here it is. Now, it says you can find a full set. In my case, I got a torso, helmet, and arm. But it's, uh, it's good going. If you were of a higher level, there's probably a better chance of it being complete. So, I don't know why the wiki fooled me like that. But, let's head on over to our next destination. Murkwater Construction Site is where we're heading to next to another Crash Vertibird. Once you negotiate with the local residents, we can head on over southwest to find this crashed vertebrate. It is hidden deep into the swamp, and do you know what? It probably would be much better for visibility if I drop it to, yeah, nine. We'll see it in the map and just see how wrong I was. I thought it was directly south. No, it's more west than south. So, there you go. Power armor found, and uh, yeah, well, this crew had... Well, they definitely had a bumpy landing, that's for sure. The MP blast of the nuke, of course, throwing most of the vertebrates out of the air um, as uh, their electronics would have been scrambled, and data just all went boom. Right, now let's head a wee bit further onto the coast and get more Raider Power Armor. 
This whole area is crawling with Raider Power Armor waiting to be reclaimed. First up is Poseidon Energy. Now this one is held by a particularly nasty Raider called Cuddy. But he's next to a bobblehead so it makes it particularly useful to get it. Now I am just going to go straight through the main door. Cuddy tends to have a full piece of armor so if you do take him down make sure the suit doesn't explode and you can take pride in all of his fine armor bits as well as the endurance bobblehead and a tesla magazine can't be bad to that what does that give you again permanent weapon damage yes please all right next up on our map we are heading over to quincy Corys. let's go now, normally a raider will spawn with some T-51 power armor at the bottom of Quincy Quarries. Now, in my case, nobody, including Slow, has decided to wear the armor, so I'm not too sure whether I'm too low a level in this particular run for that to happen. But not to fear, I can guarantee two more just nearby. We've got Quincy, um, well, the Quincy Ruins, where we've got Tessa and Clint. They both will be wearing power armor, so let's go pay them a quick visit. First up is Clint. Now, he's found, of course, on top of the freeway, and you'll have to do quite a bit of fighting to get through to him. And he wears not Raider Power Armor, but in fact, it appears to be T60 or T45. Now, as for Tessa, she is currently down at the Quincy Police Station. Let's uh, go. Yeah, she's a much easier find, and in this case, she seems to be wearing both Raider Power Armor and normal T45. So, that's uh, quite the unique mixture there, Tessa. Mmm. Okay, so, we're going to head on over to Nippensap Park and uh, get another military convoy with some power armor. Nice foggy conditions to show you exactly where the power armor is. If you can find it this weather, you can find it in any. So, you can just see it peeping its head out of the water. If it doesn't have a helmet, you actually won't see it that easily. Uh, but it appears this convoy and, uh, well, the power armor fell out of this truck into this pond where it's been submerged and in surprisingly good condition. Now, it can be X01, so if you're over level 28, this might be a fantastic find for you. Next up, South Boston Military Checkpoint. While it can be rare, the South Boston Military Checkpoint can be a full set of X01 power armor, even the Mark III kind, once you reach the specific level. It does require an expert lock, so I would advise you avoid this area until a much higher level if you are looking for that X01. Now, our next destination is located just south of Big John's Salvage. Let's go. Just when you're on your way to the Shaw's High School, you can come across yet another power armor suit this time it is usually just a frame so if you are lucky you might get a part or two but it can be x01 so with that ticked off and once you fight the mr gutsy this armor is yours located right here as you can see next up is the autumn's cat adam cat's garage where we're actually going to uh, purchase power armor or kill them whichever one floats your boat if you want their unique paint job, then killing them probably isn't the best idea. But say you don't care about the paint job, eh, then you can just go ahead. Go wild. Also, whilst you're here, be sure to pick up the unarmed bobblehead. I always miss this one. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you that wee heads up so you're more prepared in the future. In terms of the power armor frame, you can find it outside the back. And, of course, they're all wearing their own little, uh, uh, little suit. There it is. Now you will have to steal this one or purchase it from, of course, your lady in the back there. Uh, once you do a few quests and you chat to her, you can end up buying it. Which, to be fair, is a much more peaceful way of going about it than, uh, you know, most people. Most people. This next suit can be found in the middle of the hornet's nest in a gunner stronghold of the Mass Bay Medical Center. It's a T-45 without the helmet, so at least you have a guaranteed spot to find most of a T-45 if that's what you're looking. It doesn't change with levels, so if you do come here to a much higher level, uh, hopefully you aren't too disappointed when you find this. It's in the radiology uh, room. Uh, easiest way to access it is just to take the elevator straight up to it once you fight through the main room of the Mass Bay Medical Center. Next up, we're going to go to Diamond City and find ourselves another piece of kit. 
Well, when I say power armor, what I really mean is when you go over to Arturo here and you purchase a power armor frame, it will deploy over here at the wee power armor station for you to use. At least I think that's where it deploys. I bought one off him in a while. Now, if we want to find some actual power armor, let's go right up to Cambridge. More specifically, the Watts Consumer Electronics. Another military checkpoint, but there's a chance of getting some T-51, so let's go. You can normally find the military checkpoint. I say normally, it's not like it moves. They're right behind Watts Consumers. So if we walk all the way over to it, it's inside a cage. Now, this cage does require an advanced lock terminal to be opened. Once you do, it could be T45, T51. Nothing beyond that. But if you do want something that is a bit closer to that, well, we'll head on over to the Poseidon Energy Turbine, where we'll find yet another power armor nearby. I am, of course, using the turbine more so as some form of, uh, what's the, landmark in order to get to this. It seems it belonged to a pilot of this crashed Stingwing. Once we climb all the way up here, you can find the suit alongside a wee utility protectron and the military convoy that came to recover the aircraft. Now, this can be T-60, so it makes it slightly better than the other one we were looking at. Now, let's go on to finding a bit more on the Raider Power Armor side, or just even a frame. Now, deeper into the city, we're going back close to Court 35. In fact, it's Postal Square. Let's go! But instead of going to Postal Square, you'll go to the Old North Church. The reason for that is Postal Square, not only in the game guide, the Wikipedia and Fallout 4 maps, it tricked everyone into believing there was power armor there. There wasn't. But if we go to the North Church and we go off to a military barge, you see where this is going, with also a crashed vertebrate, although I think the armor cage was already on the barge before the vertebrate arrived, you have a novice lock terminal. Now, this particular suit is not only a guaranteed spawn of whatever it is, it's up to a max of T60, so come at a later level and you'll get a full set of T60 power armor inside this cage. Not a bad find at all, is it? Okay, now we're going to head on and find another power armor uh, further into the city. This next Raider power armor is probably one of the most difficult to obtain in the game, so if you're up for a challenge, visit the Massachusetts State House. Once you fight through the entire dungeon, fight through the Queen, and then fight through hordes and hordes of Raiders all the way to the top level, you can cross over, fight through turrets, more mines, and you'll find a final raider in some power armor ready to fight you. And if you take him out, you deserve that armor. And I mean it. You really, really do. Press the button and you're going to escape this dungeon before heading on over to Cleo at Good Neighbor. We're going to buy some more equipment. Let's go. Ah, Finn's just uh, in the middle of the video. Hello, Finn. We are currently in Good Neighbor at one of uh, the Commonwealth's favorite Assault Tron, Cleo, where you can buy yourself not only some armor parts, but a power armor frame. It'll appear here and you can piece stuff together. Some people seem to prefer the route of purchasing armor. I'm not sure why, but you know, whatever you, whatever playthrough you're going for, keep at it. If you enjoy it, that's the whole point of this game. It's just having fun. Now, there's actually two sets of power armor in the town of Good Neighbor. Well, power armor frame and parts from Cleo. The second one can be found in Bobby's questline, The Dig. When you're going through it, you will eventually encounter a suit of power armor, usually missing legs. But it can be X01 power armor. You just have to be a high enough level before you start the quest. Now, I'm going to jump on over to The Dig and show you exactly what part to find it. So yes, when you are progressing through the quest line, the dig, you will come across this room that has the fusion core generator. Then the little Eddie robot will smash down this wall and you'll have to fight a Mirelurk. Doing so, you'll be able to obtain this power armor. Since we're going for the completionist of every one in the game, this is a pretty good spot. Now, since we've covered Good Neighbor and the barge near Old North Church, we'll be heading over to North Hagen Beach. There's a checkpoint you see on the way to Fort Strong, right slap bang here, where you can find a potentially, you can find, a full set of T-51 power armor. Which sounds good to me. Let's go. 
And with a nice view of the Boston skyline and the airport before the Pidwin actually arrives, we can go over to Fort Strong and find this checkpoint. Inside, there is potentially a full set of T-51 power armor. No enemies to speak of. It's actually quite eerie how quiet this place is. Nordhagen being the closest uh, spot if you want to fast travel. Um, I wouldn't go to Fort Strong. There's probably going to be super mutants. Why not go to Nordhagen where it's going to be friendlier? Okay, and once you obtain the power armor right here, we're going to get ourselves a few more bits and pieces. And I know just where to go. The Revere Beach Station, where we'll find uh, some more Raider power armor. We haven't had that in a while. Be good to get a wee bit of a nice change, eh? Ah, the Revere Beach Station. A lovely place to take the family or to collect some Raider power armor. This guy tends to spawn with uh, a lot of consistency, as in... He's always here. So be sure to pick up any pieces that you may need. And uh, yeah, you'll probably have to dispose of him and his little dog companion. It appears he knew I was following him. Now, if you want just an empty power armor frame, I know, I know. You can go over to the Revere Satellite Array where technically it was regarded as a secret power armor at one stage. Strange, I know. Let's go over and have a look. And on a rather wet and windy day, we're going to find a power arm frame guarded by an army of super mutants. It's located on the northern satellite array. Now, after this, we'll be visiting the National Guard station, picking up two suits of power armor, another checkpoint, and then a military barge. After that, we'll have a few more raiders to deal with before moving on to Far Harbor and Nuka World to collect all of theirs. So, quite a number of power armor so far in the series. If you've enjoyed, be sure to drop a like at this point and let me know your thoughts in the comments if you think I've missed one. But you haven't seen the end of the video, so keep on watching. Here's the frame in all its glory. It may just be a frame, but to many people, it is nothing but potential. Anyway, after that sloppy speech, we're going to go straight to the National Guard Armory right across. But instead of fast traveling, I'm going to walk. And the reason for that is I can actually kill several birds with one stone here. By walking up here, you should be able to find the convoy that normally sits parked up. Ha! Huh. Convoy was a little further back than I thought it was. But we still get some power armor. Uh, this one is guarded heavily by robots, Mr. Gutsies, and at later levels, Assault Trons. Uh, be careful when you're in the area. And you can pick yourself up a few bits and pieces of a power armor unit. Now, once we've looted the convoy, we'll want to start heading on over to the National Guard station. It's the only place where you find two pieces of armor more or less in the same main location, which, in a sense, makes it quite cool. And in this foggy weather, I also somehow managed not to go towards the National Guard station. Everyone loves when I pull up the map. So there it is, north of County Cross Station. Right, so let's get to the first one. This one is among some of the containers here. It's an expert lock security gate. Once you open it, be sure to, you know, take good care of your new power armor unit. The other one requires a bit more involvement. We're gonna actually have to go into this place and loot the armory. Oh, no, sorry, I meant you go in and loot the armory. I don't have to. I can just open this door and go in. Does activate a sentry bot when you leave. Do bear that in mind. Also, there's traps. Lots of traps. Lots and lots of traps. And there it is, in all its glory in this room. Behold the power armor unit. Yeah. It's going to send, uh, well, I want you to deal with this guy. He's the easy one. The pushover, uh, well, the, the sentry bot, he's outside. He's the bigger problem. But our next destination is not anywhere near here. In fact, it's all the way over to Nahant. Uh, specifically, a barge right here. So, catch us over there. With the weather still not improving, the series continues. North in the hunt, we can find this power armor barge. Well, it's a military barge guarded by a lot of robotic guardians. In the last uh, attempt to loot this place, there was, yep, there's assault trons here. It's definitely one of the more dangerous ones. If you somehow manage to sneak on board though, you can go all the way around the back here. I don't even think you have to open anything. Oh no, you do. It's an advanced lock security gate, giving you access to yet another power armor. Now, 
Where is our journey going to take us from here? You like Raider Power Armor? We have two more to go before we venture off into Far Harbor. First one, we're going to go to the Saugus Ironworks. Let's go. Ah, the robots are nearby. So you've just fought through the entire Saugus Ironworks and you've made it to the Blast Furnace where you get one of the best cinematics in Fallout 4 and I take absolute pride in watching this. Just the moment you see him, just chop your man's head off. Uh, a few people said that, uh, well, can you save him? No. I'm assuming you can't save him. I, I remember reading someone tried. I'm not too sure did they use Jet or... Or what on earth they did, but yeah, Clint is kind of wearing a pseudo Raider par armor with normal par armor, and he's got a pretty nice uh, shish kebab. Also, whilst you're here, pick up the explosive bobblehead. It sits behind him. It's pretty useful just whilst you're in the area. Also, don't get yourself caught in the uh, the blast furnace. I've done that once or twice and perished pretty quickly. Okay, so our next destination, last one on the mainland is the uh, the Dunwich Borders. But before we get to it, I forgot I have somewhere else to cover. Right, let's go on over to the Boston Airport first. At the Boston Airport, you will be able to get quite a few parts, modifications, and power armor suits, as well as ones that you can buy on board, none other than the Pudwind, whenever it arrives. I haven't done it, and for some reason the quest commands aren't working, so it's not here. Imagine that it is, and you do go on board, and the Brotherhood are, you know, they're the Power Armor Masters. Of course they're going to have a lot to do with Power Armor. Now, we have one final raider to deal with. Over to Dunwich Boars. Doodla doodla doo. Well, we're at Dunwich Boars, and in fact we don't uh, have to go into it, which is pretty handy for me. Uh, you can see the guy in the power armor. He normally does a wee patrol. I've been watching him for a bit here where he goes up and down the quarry walls. I mean, makes a lot of sense considering he's wearing a pretty beefy suit of Raider power armor. Uh, okay, right. You're probably wondering, is it just power armor? Is it Raider power armor or a mixture of both? I'll jump down, surprise him, give him a wee Christmas card. Let's see. Uh, it is just Raider power armor as far as I can tell. Okay. So, over to Far Harbor, where we're going to find ourselves some special variants of Vim Par Armor. Something to spice up the, uh, you know, spice up things whilst uh, we're about. So, uh, I'll catch us all over on the island. We're back on the spooky island in Far Harbor, where you can get none other than, boom, the Vim Par Armor. The green one that gives you plus one to your agility. It can be found north of the National Park's Visitor Center, guarded by nothing. It's guarded by nothing. There's no one about. There there might be some local wildlife, but I've never been attacked in any of my playthroughs except getting here. Getting here's the problem, but once you do, you'll be able to enter the suit, get plus one agility, which by the state you probably get to it isn't the biggest selling point. Um, it's just, uh, if anything, it's just something nice to have. And, uh, oh, it's got the wee torch up top. Okay, so if you like this one, you'll probably like the red one. But before we get to the red one, we've got to go get the only other power armor frame in the entire island. Down at Brook's Head Lighthouse. Let's go. Maybe it's just the completionist inside of me. Why do we have to go see a frame? I just want to see the red one, you're probably saying. Because the frame is potential. That's what a frame is. So right to the back there should be a, a tiny little shed. There it is. I managed to do a loop before actually getting to it. And boom, there is a little frame if you need one. I don't know why you'd need one by this stage, but maybe you do. Okay, so the third one on the island is heavily guarded. This is the Vim Pop Factory, which is actually not that far north. Uh, crawling with super mutants, the red one gives plus one to strength, but first, I've got to get to it. Which, given the creepy ambiance of this entire area, and just the amount, sheer amount of super mutants to fight through, it's, uh, it's a worthwhile cause. Located at the back in the warehouse, we've got to run ourselves by everything. Well, I'm running by it, you'll probably have to fight it. Which, to be fair, in this story, yous are the true heroes, and not me. Because I use commands to make life a little easier when recording. You bear the brunt of all of it, and still fight through. Admirable. Okay, let's uh, mosey our way 
on up here. Open the security gate. We need to get back into the factory here. And uh, mosey our way up the catwalk. And there you can kind of see it in the background. Blends in with meat bags. And maze super mutants even shoot at you when you have it. It's an awesome paint job. I really like it. I actually didn't realize the shoulder blade is uh, your woman from the uh, the front of the Vimpop factory. That is cool. Okay, so we've covered the island. That's the three that you can find. Now let's go over to Nuka World and see what we can get over there. Just before we go to Nuka World, special shout out to the wreck of the USS Riptide, who I almost forgot about. And I'm sure plenty of us were ready to run to the comments to say, oh, you forgot about that raider. Well, I didn't. Here he is in all his glory. Right, with that, straight to Nuka World. Let's go. First power armor in Nuka World is the Overboss, worn by Coulter when you're in the Cola Cars Arena. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's a unique variant of the Raider power armor and extremely cheap to maintain. Now, you do have to beat him, and obviously the weakness comes with uh, water because he's using the electrics of the uh, bumper cars. Quite an ingenious piece of equipment. I must say, Coulter, I am well impressed. Next up, we are at the World of Refreshment, featuring a river of Nuka Quantum. We've got to go inside if we want to get at this particular power armor, so let's go right to it. Most of this does involve just a very long walk to the end of the river. Let's go. And once you're nearing the very, very end, you can find it over here on your right-hand side. The Nuka Cola Special Edition Amazing Armor. I suppose I need to figure out how to open the door here. One second. It's one of them follow the wire jobs. And then it leads to a systems control terminal. This can be found in one of the main parts of the uh, bottle implant, it would seem. And uh, once you press that, it'll open the door and get you that sweet ass suit. Right, let's go to our next one. Over on the Bradburton overpass, you can find some power armor once you fight your way through and use the lift system to get over to the south side. You can find the suit sitting, just peering over the edge. Not only that, it appears that one of the gunners is actually wearing some power armor as well. Where'd he go? There he is. So, technically, that's a two for one. In my books. Okay, so the next one up is located in the Morton Residence, which is much further north than here, so let's get over to it. Once you're at the Morton Residence and you make your way through the building, up through the basement into the back garage, you can find a unique piece of Raider Power Armor, a very nice piece of kit. Open the chain and you'll be released back out into the wild where you can find and hunt down even more Power Armor, just like me. Now, we're heading over further west to our next destination. Next up, we are very close to Safari Adventure. And, uh, well, not really inside, more outside the walls of it. No gator claws nearby here. Now, once you unlock this door, you can find the power armor suit sitting in the back. Normally, it's X01. I'm a very low level in Yuka World at the moment, so uh, sorry to disappoint. We'll be moving on to the next one, which is on the back of a military truck. It seems even the military had a presence in Nuka World leading up to the end. On the back of the truck you can find a full set of X-01 power armor if you're high enough level and if you come to Nuka World you probably will be. It's found west of Dry Rock Gulch and we're going to be heading over towards the Nuka power plant where we'll find one inside and one southeast. That's what's coming up next. Once you're in the Nuka Cola World Power Plant, fight your way through all the ghouls. It's a natural wee dungeon all the way to the end, where you'll find an advanced lock terminal inside another X01 Power Armor. Not a unique one, but high enough level, it's X01. You'll actually be leaving Nuka World with around nine sets when you think about it. That's pretty awesome. All right, so the next one is located actually in a wee unmarked location southeast. We haven't got there in the series yet, but we will be visiting Nuka World very soon. Always gives me the tingles when I find an unmarked location southeast of the Nuka World power plant. We can find ourselves another power armor, the second last one in the entire game. Ooh, and a rotten feral ghoul, nice. And it's located behind this door. How do you open then? Do you have a wire? 
Can I just open you? Is there buttons I've got to press? There's an advanced lock terminal that I have to open. That's it. That explains a lot. Well, Rotting Feral, you go back to whatever you're doing at the moment. And uh, we will go find the final power armor. This is the one and only Nuka-Cola Quantum Armor. And to my knowledge, it's inside the Galactic Zone. So, I need to run my uh, ass all the way over there. And then we'll find it. And that'll conclude basically every single power armor in Fallout across the main game, Far Harbor and Nuka World. What an awesome achievement. See us all over in the uh, in Galactic World. That place. And this is it, the last power armor. We are at the Starport Nuka at the Galactic Zone. Now, in order to gain access to the special Nuka-Cola Quantum power armor, you will need to collect 35 star cores. Now, in a future video, I may actually show you where all 35 are, but once you do collect them, swing on over to the mainframe, activate it, and boom you will have access to this armor. But of course, I'm going to just nip straight through the glass and boom, you've got it. Now, what do these do? Well, they increase your action point refresh rate and it looks awesome. It's an x one Mark V. There isn't really much else to say about it. It's got an awesome paint job and uh, whilst it is a bit fidgety to find all 35 star cores, Definitely worth it if you want to pick up the armor. Then you can walk out of here like an absolute boss. That is every power armor I can think of or find. I've checked wikis. I've checked everything. So let me know if I've missed any. I'm always curious. Call me out in the comments while we chat. Other than that, I uh, hope you've enjoyed my commentary. I'm going to be doing a lot more long form as well as my unmarked location series when we visit Nuka World. It's going to be extra exciting. It's probably the most I've seen in Nuka World since uh, years ago when it came out. So, yep, yeah, awesome, fantastic. Thank you for watching. See you all in the next one. Bye-bye.